Okay, all right. So um, actually for methods for risk evaluation, we're gonna have um, three, three sections. This is number two. And uh, number one, if you remember, we looked at the three summaries of uh, risk uh, identification disclosure risks. And then we did the demonstration for A, synthetic data with categorical variables only. And for section two today, we're gonna um, like, uh, review that a little bit and then look at once you have more than one um, synthetic data how you can most efficiently write code and then uh, do all of the evaluations and then um, and then we're gonna mention also today about how you can do the um, what are you thinking about doing for uh, identification disclosure risk when you have continuous variable okay and then um, next Tuesday uh, what we're gonna cover is uh, attribute disclosure risk Okay, so we have three different lectures um, for the risk evaluation. And um, well, not because it's more challenging to do, but just uh, thinking about schedule, how things work the best, and then that's how we came up with it. Okay. All right, so, all right, I said, okay. Yeah, thank you, Reese. I, I saw the message. Yeah, thank you. And Isaac just joined. Yeah, so Isaac, we just, we, we just started actually. So hopefully you can see the screen. And um, all right, so um, so for this part, uh, yeah, so for today, we're gonna talk about uh, example number two, pretty much is just now we have more than one synthetic uh, American community survey. So that was the data, data that we have with three, uh, with nine categorical variables, okay? 10,000 observations, all of the variables are categorical. And uh, we're gonna see how we can do that for multiple synthetic data sets when we're doing the um, risk evaluation. And then I'm going to ask uh, to turn it to you to uh, let you share what you're thinking or what you have done um, to do continuous example. And you, I asked you to do the CE sample, but if you are using it for your project or any other data sets, feel free to share it by them. All right, so the recap for uh, M equals to one. Remember, so I'm, I didn't include the, uh, like the slides of the code again, but you can refer to the previous uh, lecture slides there. So at that point, I was saying that when we are trying to do M greater than one in our upcoming example is M equals to three, uh, certain vectors in the past, we are doing it as just a vector because M equals to one, like the C vector that is counting how many observations are sharing the same um, combination, right? And then the T vector was the in indicator uh, vector L uh, binary, right? whether the, um, I think the synthetic value is amount, oh, sorry, the true value, uh, the true record is amount, the uh, highly, uh, like the most likely records, okay? And then the K and F, those are used later, but both of them are binary as well, and they are used later for computing the true match rate and then the false match rate. So instead of working with them as vectors, we might want to do matrices now, if you're gonna write a, like a slightly different uh, function as before, okay? So that was one recommendation. Mm -hmm. And uh, S, if you remember, that's the number of unique matches. So if you only have one synthetic data set, then S is a scalar, okay? Uh, but now if you have multiple, if you're writing a slightly different function, from before, you can create, a, create it as a vector of length m. So each element will be actually the um, number of unique matches in that particular synthetic data set. You might want to add nested loops when necessary. Uh, the one that I'm sharing will include that. And um, also the expect match risk, true match rate, and then the false match rate, they now should be vectors as well. Okay? So they are all univariate, uh, I should say, scalar, they're all scalars earlier when m equals to one, and now um, you can do them as vectors. So that was most um, the recommendation if you want to turn what we covered before into what we're trying to do now. And uh, lastly, scene data. Um, remember in the uh, Bayesian synthesis models lectures, we created scene data once we have more than one and greater than one. We had, um, we created as a list, okay? So, so that's why in the demo that I'm going to do soon, um, scene data is considered as a list. Okay? But again, that's not the only way to do this. You might have other ways, which is totally fine. Um, but this was the summary slide from last time uh, that I was trying to um, share with you all that oops, that might be, uh, might be useful. Okay. All right, so 
let's now go to um, the ACS sample. So again, this was the nine variables and they're all categorical. And then now um, we still have this ACS data org, that's original ACS sample. But now we have two more synthetic data sets that I share with you. All of them are saved in a CSV, a separate CSV, right? So it's scene and scene two and scene three. The four variables to synthesize, they are all the same as before, the language spoken at home, the place of birth, I think, disability status and health coverage status. In this case, M equals to three. And uh, the known variables of the three, um, um, sex, race, and then marital status. So the goal is use this information to identify records in the three synthetic data sets and then obtain the three summaries. So notice that the way that I'm doing it here is I uh, read in each of the uh, synthetic data set, three of them from the CSV file, and then I put them together into a list. This is again, um, just our, our like manually doing this, um, but the reason earlier I explained that why I'm doing a list instead of anything else is because in the Bayesian synthesis models um, section that we covered before those lectures, we were um, creating synthetic data as a list to, so when you have M greater than one, so that's why we're putting everything here. So if you're not doing this, which is fine, and you just kind of adjust code uh, accordingly. All right, so uh, the function that I prepared uh, is a little bit complicated. Actually, I had to do like four pages and just to show you uh, the general workflow. And this is very similar to what we did before. The function is called identification risk. Oh, I should take that back. Before, I break the steps down into multiple steps just to give you an overview. Uh, but here, I wrote a big function called identification risk. Uh, the inputs are original data, synthetic data as a list. The known variables and the synthetic variables, and then M, that's the number of synthetic data sets, and N, that's the number of observations. Right? So, start off, we uh, create the C vector and then the T vector. And now they're matrices. Maybe I should call them matrix, but you know what I mean. So, um, now instead of just a vector of length N, I'm doing a matrix of M by N. So, um, so this loop uh, is looping through each of the observations. So notice that, so I, the indicator, I mean, the, the indicator there is for each observation, N is the number of observations in each synthetic data set. So what I'm doing, as you can see, is that um, nested loop, okay? The first one is looping through all of the observations. The second one, inner loop, is looping through different um, synthetic uh, data set, okay? Because now we have more than, uh, more than one, okay? So M is three in this case. And uh, again, you might want to write the loop, uh, I mean, the next loop in the other way around, I mean, going through the synthetic data sets first and then going through the, um, the each observation. Um, I don't remember why I did this way in particular, um, maybe the other way, anyway, I just came up with this, but you can play with that. And uh, as you can see now, we will have to add this new um, command. This is slightly different from before. I have to do this first, uh, simply because uh, now we have to, because the loop is going through the uh, synthetic data one by one. Okay, so and I do this uh, underscore K to make sure that we have everything correctly marked. So now I also have the underscore K because the match now is uh, matching within each synthetic data set for each record. Okay, so this stays, this chunk, I should say, stays very similar as before. And this one is really just looking at um, which of the match uh, are known zero, pretty much, okay? And, oh, I should say just like uh, counting which are the records are having the highest probability, which in this case are actually the records sharing the same, um, the same uh, sharing the same synth values and uh, the known values and the synth values, okay? So uh, we checked, uh, say this stays very similar as before except earlier the C vector and T vectors, they are actually vectors, now they're matrices. So make sure that you get the indexing correct, but everything else stays um, as before. So hopefully, hopefully this part is not, not too bad, and I will, um, I'm sure like some of you tried, tried this already, so you might have the other more efficient ones to do it. Happy to hear that after, after I go through the ones that I did. 
And then here again, just a little bit of code. Um, don't worry about it. It's very similar to before the K vector and the F vectors. Now they're matrices, and then we compute them uh, given their um, given their definition. Okay. And lastly, we compute the S vector and then the expected matrix, true match rate, as well as the false match rate. We now have everything as a vector just because we have more than one synthetic data set. And then lastly, um, I return all of them, like the S vector and then the three summaries, but also the C, T, K, and F vectors, just in case we want to verify anything elsewhere. Um, but actually for this, um, for this function, you only really need um, the, this three, I think, because those are the three summaries that, that you want, okay? And as you know, um, the, the summaries from the previous page this summary, so uh, the three summaries plus S over here, they're all just computed based on like, the C vector, the T vector, the K vector, and F vector. So really, um, you probably like, um, you really don't need all of this output as I did over here. Um, I included them just for, um, just for fun, but also just to make sure that what if something that does not seem right, um, I can still verify maybe, maybe something I, I can, I can uh, recover. And the thing is, uh, I don't know, like for my code, it didn't run for that long, but definitely not very efficient. And uh, once you change the configuration, like how many uh, synthetic, uh, synthetic variables or how many known variables you have, and then if you have a larger data set that you're looping through all of this, it's gonna take longer to complete. That's why uh, it might be a good idea just to like return all of the, um, like all of the vectors or all of the quantities of interest um, anyway, yeah, just in case later you have to do something about that. But other than that, everything should be good to go. And um, so what I did is the known variables is sex, race, and marital status, as before. Synthetic variables are the three. Uh, and here is the um, dimension of the original data, which is 10,000, I think. And then M, uh, because ACS data underscore seen underscore or, that is the list. So if you do a length of that, it just tells you how many uh, how many objects are in the list, which will be three based on what we did. So the output will be running this identification risk function, the original data, the synthetic data as a list, known variables, seen variables, and then n. Right. So I ran this. Maybe this when I don't know, like a like a minute, maybe based on what I did, um, the nested loop that I wrote, and then the results that I got are this forty one. Um, 0 0.00056 ish and then 96 percent ish. Right? So, this um, again, so notice that I took the mean for each of the three vectors, right? So, um, if I don't take the mean, then it's going to be a um, vector of three elements because we have m equals to three. Um, but we talked about it last time that if you have more than one synthetic data, you do the summaries of each of the synthetic data and then just take the average um, of the summaries and then to get your final summaries. So that's what I, what I did. And it's slightly different from, from when we did it only for one synthetic data. And, um, but to, to discuss the results, um, you can think of this as 41.47 um, expected match risk. And that is for all of the um, observations, which is 10,000 of them in total. So that's, for, that's the sum, if you remember the definition, of the um, expected risk, it was the sum of i from 1 to n and then ti over ci, right? So it is the sum that we're reporting, which is 41.47. And then if you think about on average for each um, observation, that's why you can divide it that by 10,000. And that is now a probability statement because again, this is a probability, remember? because ti could be one or zero, and ci is the number of observations sharing exactly the same um, pattern or like same combination that you're considering. So that ratio gives you a sense of the probability that if you're randomly guessing the identity, identity of, the, uh, of the record of interest among the ci records, it's either one over ci or, or zero over ci, because ti when TI is one, that is the true record is actually among the CI records. And so that will just be a one over CI that is the probability of randomly guessing it correctly. And then when TI equals to zero, that is the case that 
uh, after the synthesis, we have moved the records around a lot. And then actually the um, actual real record, the true record is not among the most likely records, the CI outcome, and then that will become a zero. Okay, so, so because of that, the sum of all of this is computed as 41.47. So you can think about it as an individual or the record level, and then that will give you a probability, which is super low um, on average for each record to be correctly identified. So that's one way to think about what these values mean. And then the true match rate across the three synthetic data sets uh, is 0.0006. Okay, that's a percentage because it's a rate. So if you multiply that by the number of records, you can think of that as about six records in total amount 10,000. They are the correct unique matches. Okay, so uh, true match rate, we know that is TI over, uh, not TI, I think it's, it's what, F? No. KI, right? Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So true match rate, I think is um, KI divided by N, okay? So KI is, if you only have one match, KI is binary again, okay? If you only have one match and it is the true match, then that will be KI, okay? So remember also this, sorry, the, this N should be that small N. Right, so um, yeah, so that again, it's a, um, so we consider it as a rate because it's a, it's a percentage, uh, but if you multiply by the number of uh, records you have, then it's only about, only six records amount of 10,000 are the actual correct unique matches, okay? So that's a way to understand this number. The false match rate, if you remember, um, it is a different set up here that will be the sum of, I think, Fi over S, okay? So to refresh your memory, Fi is binary again, okay? If it is one, it is a unique match, but it's actually not the true record, okay? Equals to zero otherwise. And small s is the number of, um, I think the number of unique matches in total. And uh, again, because now we're dealing for three synthetic data sets, I'm taking the average of this S, which is 161. So if I have a 96% false match rate, that means among the 161 unique matches, uh, 155 of them are false matches. Okay, they're not the true matches. Okay, so that's how you can understand this number. So overall, combining all of this, the identification disclosure risk seems to be uh, really low, indicating a high level of confidentiality protection of the synthetic. Uh, American community survey data. So, um, all right, so I'm gonna, let's see. Um, I can do, I'm gonna stop, oops, stop here, okay, stop here. And then just come back to here, uh, I guess, really quick to, um, to see if you all get the same number. So there shouldn't be any random in the process, okay? There is no randomness in the process because everything is deterministic. So if you did it correctly, we, uh, we should have the same numbers or the values. Uh, but if you accidentally made some mistakes, we might not be. So that's the thing uh, I want to like chatting with you uh, before we go to the new topic. Anybody wants to share uh, what they have done? And, um, and then, I said we can see you here as well. Yeah, yeah. Actually, since we can do uh, breakout rooms in Zoom, maybe you know about this functionality. Um, I will take the break and um, do a quick, uh, maybe like a, how many of us here? In, excluding me, I think there were nine minus two, okay, seven. So I'm gonna do three, uh, two, let's just do two groups, uh, three groups, okay, and then it's gonna be great. So when m is equal, yeah, m equals to three, not really big, then you can actually just run the function that I provided last time on the three different data sets and then average them. And then that will give you the same results as well. The ones that I shared today is, uh, is actually the ones that I usually would use, um, I mean, for my own research, uh, just because, well, m won't be only three. A lot of times m is 20, right? Like 20 is the usual number that we've been using. 
and then that might not be an efficient use of time, efficient way of use of time to, to do it like multiple times on each data set and an average. So, so you can write a function, like a bigger function like that, and then that will, that will do. So um, any other comments? Questions? So again, nothing is uh, random in this computation. Okay, we never draw like a random number or from a random distribution. And so it should just be, if we all use the same data sets, we should all come to the same value. Okay. okay. All right, sounds good. And um, yeah, it looks like Ray still hasn't joined. So hopefully, hopefully he'll be, he will, he will. But I will record, um, oh, he just gets in. Mm -hmm.